Hey, you, Sandy K. You got a minute for an average radio listener? Uh-oh. This week, my average listener is a little boy. It ain't C. Aubrey Smith. I see where I'm going to have trouble with you. I wouldn't say that, Mr. K. Us kids all look up to you. You do? Yeah. You're taller than us. <laughs> well, Sonny, I don't mind what you say about me, but please don't criticize my program, will you? I feel toward this show as though it were my own little baby. Don't look now, Mr. K, but your baby needs a change. <laughs> Listen, kid, you better run home before your mother rents your room. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. K. Don't be so precocious. I'm precocious? Oh, you're the freshest little kid I've ever seen. No, I'm not, Mr. K. Not really. My father believes in that old saying. Bear the rod and spoil the child. Well, in your case, I'm afraid he spoiled the child. He had to. Last month, I hocked his rod. <laughs> you're a happy little monster, ain't you? <laughs> Why are you hanging around here for anyway? On account of they spun me out of the pool room. <laughs> They trun you out? Yeah, forcibly ejected, you know. Yeah, I know. And listen, my little pool room Pinocchio, you can look forward to being forcibly trun out of here, too. Now, wait a minute, Mr. K. If I leave here, I go right back to the snooker parlor. Would you want to contribute to juvenile delinquency? In your case, you can put me down for ten bucks. So long, Junior. <laughs> That blue ribbon, oh, the blue ribbon bee. That blue ribbon, oh, the blue ribbon bee. It's splendid, splendid. Your search for the very best is then, then, when you call for that blue ribbon bee. Thirty-three fine grooves blended into one great deal. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dick Joy introducing the Danny Kay Show from Hollywood, presented by the makers of Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, with Butterfly McQueen, Dave Terry and his orchestra, and our special guests this evening, Miss Benet Venuta, and the star of the RKO Picture Corner, Dick Powell. And now, here's the star of our show... Danny Kay! Gosh, Danny, your scat singing was wonderful tonight, but uh, wasn't it a little longer than last week's scat? Yeah, I guess my scat had skittens. <laughs> well, uh, I, I really can't blame you for trying to get in your singing first tonight. After all, Dick Powell and Benet Venuta are both excellent vocalists. Yes, yes, they are, but they're not going to be here tonight. They're not? Well, why not? Well, I will tell you this much, Joy Boy. They had a terrible experience last week. They did? Yeah. You know, ever since Dick Powell started playing those hard-boiled detective characters, strange things have been happening to him. All sorts of mysterious people keep bothering him. Where's Dick Powell? Dick Powell, I gotta see him. Well, just a moment, mister. I'm Danny Kay. I got my own troubles. <laughs> Where's Dick Powell? They told me he'd be here tonight. Well, he was supposed talk, to be here. Talk, talk, talk. I don't want talk. I want Dick Powell. I'm trying to tell you, Mr. Powell. Yes, the yes, the yes, the stop talking and chase him. <laughs> Where is he? Why isn't he here? Where can I find him? Will you please? Stop him? firing questions at him. <laughs> I gotta get hold of Dick Powell. Well, don't just stand there. Where is he? Please, Mister. Why questions, don't you? Questions, questions, questions. Stop pounding me. I can't stand this voiceless drilling. What have I done to deserve this? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> What has he done? I'm still trying to find out what Mildred Pierce did. <laughs> you see what I mean, Dick? Where's that man, Powell? Dick Powell, I've got to see him immediately, right away, well, now. Just, just a moment, madam. I'm Danny Kaye. Oh, you poor man. <laughs> but I've got to find Dick Powell. It's a matter of life and death, important, vitally important. But, madam... Oh, it's not only me. I know I don't mean anything to you, but think of the children, the little children. Children? We haven't even been introduced yet. <laughs> well, I've got to see Mr. Powell. Oh, if only you could have seen little Victor lying in his crib when I left. Poor, helpless little Victor. Victor who? How can you be so cruel? 
It is only a baby, a tiny defenseless infant. Oh, that mixture. <laughs> well, madam. Oh, I can't bear this any longer. This is insane, a mad box. There's no sense talking to you. You're just a nervous wreck. <laughs> Who, me? Did she call me a nervous wreck? Me? Nervous? Who's nervous? Not me. I'm fine. How are you? How is who? There's nobody here. What's going on here? Hello, Danny. Hello. I finally made it. I didn't think I could, but I did. Oh, I'm I glad am. you did. I think you are. How did you do? I'm glad to pay you. I can't manage it. The whole five... Who are you? Danny, don't you recognize me? He's not here, I tell you. I don't care what you say. He's not here. He's not. Oh, he's not. Danny, Danny, calm down. I'm Benet Benuda. I got my own troubles. <laughs> I know I don't mean anything to you. But, but Danny, Danny, what are you talking about? Stop firing about? questions at me! <laughs> oh, if you had only seen the children when I left. Children? Children? Oh, Danny, congratulations. Have a cigar. <laughs> oh, you should have seen poor little Victor lying there on his pool table. <laughs> Danny, will you please take talk, it easy? Talk, talk, talk! I can't stand this merciless grilling. What have I done to save all this? What have I done to brother my dad? By the way, what did I do? Now, Danny, relax. I realize you've been through a lot this past week. Danny, what have you been through this past week? What's going on here? Where's Dick Powell? Oh, if you only could have seen him lying there in his little crib. <laughs> oh, Dick Powell? No, Victor. I mean, I, I don't know where the Oh, Danny, to Danny, control yourself. Now let's put the whole thing out of our minds. Let's be gay. Yes. Gay. Yes. Uh. <laughs> That's right. Let's drown our memories in song. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm too nervous to sing now, Benet. But if you sing, I'll toss in a note here and there. Okay. 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 Dave Terry Orchestra. Okay, Dave Terry Orchestra. <laughs> Johnny could only sing one note and the note he sang was this. Yeah! Poor Johnny, one note, sang out with gusto, just overlorded the place. Yeah! Poor Johnny, one note, yelled willy-nilly until he was blue in the face. Yeah! For holding one note was his ace. It couldn't hear the brass. It couldn't hear the drum. He was in a class. At two B two, I was in, and I can best myself. I love my gum. Bubble gum, double X bubble gum. Can you blow bubble pay, huh? Oh. Can you, can you, can you oh, Danny, that's so silly. You can only sing one note. Well, I want to sing a song, and when you sing it, when my note comes along, I'm, 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 I'll sing it. Oh, that'll sound peculiar. Don't forget now, don't you sing on my note? Well, all right, all right. Oh, believe me, if all those endearing young charms Which I gazed on so fondly to today Were to go by tomorrow and fade in my arms Like fair gifts fading away Sing Johnny one note, sing out with gusto, just overwhelm all the crowd. Sing Johnny one note, out Why, Miss Venuta, I thought you wanted to be gay, and that was such a sad song. Very sad song. What's sad about it, Dick? Are you kidding? Well, just think of that poor little Johnny One Note. Why, it breaks my heart. The poor little guy with only one single note to sing, when he should have at least 33 fine notes. Just like, like... Here we go again. Yes, uh, like blended, splendid, Pabst Blue Ribbon. You see, our truly great beer is not just one brew or two brews or a dozen brews, but never less than 33 fine brews perfectly blended to give you the very tops in smoothness, in taste, in real beer flavor. That's why you can always order it with confidence, serve it with pride. That blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. Come on, you 33 noters, make with that theme song. 33 fine brews blended into one great beer. 33 fine brews blended into one great beer. Now, Danny, for the last time, what happened to you, Miss Venuta, and Dick Powell last week? Oh, I hate to talk about it, but this is the way it was. 
It all started last Monday. I went over to Dick Powell's house to talk about his appearance on tonight's show. I walked up the front steps and knocked on his door. Hello, Dick. Hello, Danny. Come in. Danny, I'm glad you came over to talk about your program because there's one thing I don't want to do. Oh, what's that, Dick? Don't make me come in and say, my sister married an Irishman, and you say, oh, really, and I say, no, O'Reilly. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry, Dick. I've decided to leave that joke out of the script. Oh, really? No, omit it. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Another thing, Danny, I'd rather not pretend I'm a detective. But, Dick, the F.W. Fitch Company sponsors you on the air as Richard Rose. That's just it, Danny. My listeners are taking me too seriously. Oh. I can't live a normal life anymore. Things are happening to me. Like what, for instance? <laughs> like that, for instance. Well, look. It's a big rock with a note on it. It came flying through the window. That's all right. It has an airmail stamp. <laughs> look, the note says, if you value your life, you will not attempt to follow us soon. All ends on 745 today, day. <laughs> Signed, the Sinister Six. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's a P.S. What does it say? It says P-A-B-R-R. -R. What does P-A-B-R-R -R mean, Dick? Please answer by return rock. <laughs> oh, oh, Dick, Dick, the most horrible thing just happened to me. Just a moment, Benet. You, you've met Danny Kay, haven't you? Yes, but that's not it. <laughs> Thanks, Benet. Oh, Dick, Dick, I hate to bother you with my troubles, but you're the only one I can turn to. The Sinister Six is after me. The Sinister Six? Yes, a man in a long black coat has been following me. Look. Look, there's a face in the window. Ah! What did you say? Ah! That's what I thought you said. Why, well, well, he's the man that's been following me. Come on, Dick, let's get that guy. There he is, there he is. Watch out, Dick. Watch out, he's got a blackjack in his hand. No! Oh, he's been sapped. The man in the black coat escaped us. But when Dick came to four hours later, we were determined to track down the Sinister Six. So we hopped a rattler for New Orleans. We should have taken the train. It was a pretty slimy trip. <laughs> when we arrived in New Orleans, we headed for a waterfront dive where the derelicts of the underworld made their head. You know, I, I don't like the looks of this crummy rat nest. It's strictly a bring down. Yeah, bring down. Uh, but we gotta nail that stupid punk that sapped me in L.A. Yeah, sapped in L.A. Wait a minute. Lamp this oily-looking character. It looks like he wants to buzz us. Yeah, uh, buzz us. <laughs> hey, you two. Twelve Finger Frankie wants to see us in the back room. Yeah, the back room. Oh, he does, huh? What does he want? He's got something for you. Step right through this archway. I don't know about this. Look out, Dick. He's got a lead pipe in his hand. Boom! <laughs> the next morning, Dick was as good as new. You'd never know he'd been slugged except for a bump on the back of his head. An egg-shaped bump about the size of an eggplant. <laughs> By now, we had learned the Sinister Six had fled to Havana, so we followed them there. Walking down a darkened street, Dick said, I know where we can find these lamisters, Danny. Where, Sloppy Joe? No. Right next door to it. Disgusting Dave's. <laughs> but wait a minute. Look through the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Disgusting Dave himself. He's sitting there with his partner. Disgusting business. <laughs> what an odd name for a partner. Yes. Let's go in. Get a load of the script, Danny. It's enough to make your skin crawl. Don't say that. Mine's crawling up to my chin. No. Oh, I thought you were wearing a turtleneck sweater. <laughs> Never mind. Let's talk to these mugs. Okay. Hey, you punk. Come here. I want to talk to you. Hey, Dave. Look who wants to talk to us. Yeah. Blondie and Dagwood. <laughs> Can we give him a couple of minutes of our time? Oh, leave us. Give him even better than that. Look out, Dick. He's got a baseball bat in his hand. Boom! Two days later, Dick was on his feet again, looking as good as new in spite of the baseball bat massage. Of course, he had a little lump on his head that looked like a fat shortstop. But by now, we were more determined than ever to follow the Sinister Six, even though the trail now led to Rio de Janeiro. Come on, Dick. Let's get on the trail right away. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's see what this fellow wants. Ah, mi amigo. Saludos, amigos. Hey, Dick, what does this amigo stuff mean? Danny, amigo means friend. Oh. 
Well, look out, Dick. Your friend is swinging a Spanish shillelagh. No! <laughs> Dick, go. Dick, Dick, speak to oh, me, Dick. Oh, oh, my ache in the head. Oh, this is ridiculous, Dick. Every time you get hit, you fall down on the job. Oh, this lump. I can't tell where my head ends and the lump begins. Well, never mind that, Dick. I think that was our man. Come on, let's get him. No, oh, this one's on you. Just let me lie here in the gutter. But, Dick... Dick, you might get hurt. Come on, I'll put you in this cab. Danny, look. Look, there's a man in this cab. He's sitting in the corner. So what? Get in, Dick. Okay. Driver, the Hotel Nacional. Danny, what about this man sitting... <laughs> you take that knife out of my friend's back. <laughs> no. No, no, Danny, leave it there. My head needs the rest. <laughs> The next day, after having Dick's puncture vulcanized, we were off on the trail anew, and much to our surprise, our next clue took us back to Los Angeles in a smoky little rendezvous known as Old Man Moe's Combo. We entered. Come on, Dick, follow me. Well, stop pushing me, Danny. Here's the head waiter. Let's get started. Okay. Say, waiter, give me a table for two. Uh, certainly, sir. I'll be glad to give it to you. Watch out, Dick. He's got a table in his hand. <laughs> Dick Dickie boy Get up, Dickie boy, get up Oh, Mom, let me sleep, there's no school today But, Dick, we have work to do Hello, Mr. K Why, Butterfly McQueen, what are you doing here? I'm fine, thank you Oh, you are? <laughs> well, that answers some question Mr. K, who's that lovely gentleman lying at your feet? He's a detective What's he doing, Mr. K? Looking for footprints? No, fingerprints We're chasing a crook who walks on his hands Oh, I see Now look, Miss McQueen, we're oh, very... Oh, my head Danny, help me up Gee, look at him, Mr. K His head has a head on it <laughs> Well, yeah, look, you'll have to excuse us now, Miss McQueen Mr. Powell and I have to find the Sinister Six Come on, Dick Oh, that reminds me I have a message for you, Mr. Powell Message? Yes, from Miss Benet Ventura Benet Ventura? Oh, never mind that. What about the message? Let me have it. Yeah, let him have it. All right, here. Oh, I forgot to take the rock off the message. Dick, where are you? He's looking for fingerprints again. Get up, Dick. Are you all right? Never mind, never mind. Let me see that message. Hey, what's the matter? The Sinister Six have Benet in the back of this joint. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. There she is. Oh, Dick, Danny, at last. Save me from the Sinister Six. Who are the Sinister Six? They're that awful jive band outside, and they want me to be their vocalist. Well, they do, huh? Well, we'll have to see about that. Look out, Dick. Here they come. <gasps> the man in the black cloak. He's their leader. Watch out, Dick. He's got a cymbal in his hand. <laughs> no! Look out, Dick. They've all got instruments. Oh! No! Oh! 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 So you see, Dick Joy, that's why Dick Powell won't be here tonight. Oh, that sure is a calamity. And speaking of clams... Oh, no, Dick. Yes, speaking of clams, you know, there's nothing like a beautiful plate of cherry stones and a tall, sparkling glass of blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. Why, from clam to ham, that truly great beer just naturally blends its own wonderful flavor with the flavor of any fine food. Yes, with meals, between meals, you just can't top the taste of blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. Well, Danny, you'll have to excuse me now. I want to run over to the hospital and see how Dick Powell is getting along. All right, Benet, and I'll go along with... Hey, wait a minute. Come in. Why, Dick. Dick Powell. Hello, folks. Oh, gosh, Dick, you made it. Yes, I would have been here earlier, but I stopped at a drive-in for an aspirin burger. <laughs> you know, Danny, I'm thinking of giving up that detective character and going back to singing. Oh, there you are. Oh, Mr. Powell, I've looked everywhere for you. I've searched high and low. I've got to oh, see you. Oh, but lady, lady, now... Oh, I know. I don't mean anything to you. Lady, please, I can't help you. Tell him about Victor, lady. That'll soften him up. <laughs> yes, poor, innocent, helpless little Victor. All right, all right, all right. What's the matter? Well, it started with my husband. He accused me of flirting with the Iceman, so he ran the Iceman out of town, and I got... 
so mad I shot my husband. Well, if you shot your husband, what do you need a detective for? I want to find that ice man. <laughs> Lady, I'm sorry, but I... I know he's here. I followed him all the way down here. Now, just a minute. How will I got to see you? Almond, my ice man. Anastasia, my sweet. (laughs) What's the meaning of all this? Uh Aha. You was going to try and trail me, huh? Now, Dick, he's got a pair of ice tongs in his hand. Hey, look where you're swinging that ice... Daddy. 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 Get up. Get up. Dick, let's look now. If I'm going to start getting hit in the head, I want to get paid for it. <laughs> paid for it, Daddy? Sure. How about you and me and Benet? We'll go into the detective business. Oh, but I've had enough of this detective racket. I, I want to go back to singing. Oh, I just got a wonderful idea. Yeah. Why can't we open a musical detective agency? Can't mm-hmm. we, Benet? Well, sure. All right. <laughs> Rat tat tat, you dirty rat. If you wanna save the day, just call on Dick the Dick. The day the chick. And dead eye Danny K. Who lurks around, who hears the sound and promptly runs away. Who? Dick the slick. K hey, the quick. And that'll help the name. If there's a sign of danger, we look, but we don't leap. And don't forget our motto. While you work, we sleep. We praise our ears to know no fear. Oh. What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just dropped the book I was reading. Oh. What kind of a book? Well, it tells you how to lie and wait for your victim and spring on him from behind. Uh huh. What's it called? Forever Ambush. <laughs> Is it any good? Any good? Any good? Why, it helped me solve the case of Hophead Harrigan. Oh, yes, I remember that case. Yes, oh, we were driving good. along in our patrol car. Yeah. Calling car 89. Calling car 89. Why haven't we heard from you all day? Is it anything we say? <laughs> That was the night we solved the case of the missing toothpick. Ah, uh, the most daring robbery in years. Yes, I remember Ooh, that. Yes, that toothpick was stolen right out from under the chap's nose. It was, huh? <laughs> and just as we were about to apprehend the culprit, he foiled us. Yes, he did. He drank a bottle of veneer so he could see his own finish. <laughs> <laughs> we come complete with two flat feet and burglars yell hooray. For Mopey Dick Benet the Chick And desperate Danny Kay We're in demand In every land Our dialect is grand Czechoslovak, Slovak, Slovak Remember the dame From Czechoslovakia How do you do, Inspector? I am Benet Vakia Benet who? Benet Vakia That's a very pretty name I like it Madam, where is your husband Czechoslovakian Sam? Oh, it is very, very sad He come home He beat me Every night he beat me I knock with six he have five. Finally, I get mad. I take Czechoslovakian Sam and throw him out window. He falls 15 stories, but alas, he bounced back. He was bad Czech. <laughs> we love our work. The fees don't matter one way or the other. No. You'd even steal the silver threads among the gold from your own mother. That's a scandalous thing to say. That's infamy. That's what it is. Infamy? How dare you? Infamy? Infamy. (laughs) Infamy for you. For me, for you, for me. Although we're we're Bart and Scott Lignard, Lignard, we very often play Dr. Watson Dick. The name the chick. And Inspector (laughs) H.I.J.K. Calling Inspector K. Proceed to 1515 Trafalgar Square. New development in streetcar murders. That is all. Herman. Herman? Roger's been fired. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Inspector K. speaking. Hello, Dr. Watson Dick. Where are you, Doctor? Trafalgar Square. At a clock. <laughs> Where? 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 Trafalgar Square. <laughs> But the same clock. Uh huh. I'm standing right under the six. Good work, man. Good work. <laughs> I'll be over before you can say Jack Robinson. Jack. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> what took you so long? Lost at Pog, you know. <laughs> well, here's the house. I think I'll press the doorbell. <laughs> Pardon me, madam. Lost at Fog, you know. (laughs) 
What's happened, Doctor? Oh, oh, it was horrible, sir. Listen, horrible. Three men all shot to death. I see. Well, where are the bodies? There are no bodies. What? No bodies! <laughs> no bodies, sir. No bodies? I can't understand this. What were they doing? They're waiting for a streetcar. <laughs> hmm. Whom do you suspect? <laughs> Sounds like the shadow. <laughs> well, that's just it. The, uh, the motorman had no motive. There were no passengers in the car. Well, obviously, Ronald. <laughs> it's an open and shut case. The murder was the streetcar. The streetcar? But three men shot. How was it done? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> bing, bing, bing went the trolley. Amazing. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing now. We slip into a mustache, and before your very eyes, make Madden look like Harry, cause we're masters of disguise. Disguise number one. I'll be with you in a minute. What's that? A bulldog. What's your name? I'm Drummond. I'm Drummond. Disguise number two. I am Honorable Charlie Chan. I am number two Chan. I am number three Chan. I am number four Chan. I am number five Chan. I am Who are you? Let's just say I am just... One more chance. <laughs> oh, really? No, Oriental. Benet and Dick, I, I want to thank you both of you very much for coming over to my show this evening. Oh, it was a lot of fun, Danny. Yes, but after what I went through this week, Danny, I, I thought you'd be reading about me in the newspapers. Oh, really? No, obituary. <laughs> oh, no, Dick, not you too, Dick. No, we can't do that joke here. I won't do it. I won't have it. I won't have it. Makers of Pabst Blue Ribbon wish to remind you that no matter how severe may be the government restrictions on grain, however much Pabst must curtail its output to protect quality, every bottle of Pabst Blue Ribbon you buy will continue to live up to its name. There'll be no cutting corners, no lowering of standards of flavor and goodness, no compromise with quality. And now, before we tell you about next week's guests, here's a message from the star of our show. Ladies and gentlemen, although many millions of veterans have returned from overseas, there are still thousands of our men serving us in foreign lands from Berchtesgaden to Tokyo. In almost 650 American Red Cross clubs, the American serviceman can find some of the comfort and friendliness that we have here at home. So give and give generously to the American Red Cross. Our Thank guests folks. next week will be Gene Hersholt and Georgia Gibbs. This program was brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.